OK, so um, hello to everyone. Thank you for your interest in this talk. Um, my name is Maria. I'm going to talk about some recent work uh, which is published uh, in this work and made in collaboration with Alexei from British University in Egypt. Um, so the outline of my, of my talk is the following. I will start um, introducing the concept of the geometrical trinity of gravity, then turn to some specific modification of one of the three points of the trinity, which is a uh, modified teleparallelism, then discuss the formal transformations in one particular case of modified teleparallelism, which is F of T gravity, and finally the conclusions. Um, can you see my pointer, no? Yes, we can. Yes, OK, good. And so uh, any manifold uh, can have the, the these three geometric properties, which are curvature, torsion and non-metricity. Uh, here in this nice uh, article, uh, there is some uh, nice uh, cartoon, uh, which is a description of these two of these three uh, components of geometric components. And we are all familiar with curvature, uh, which is obtained after um, we, whose geometric representation is the following. If you have a vector and you parallel transport this vector along a closed loop, you will get a rotation at the end of the procedure. And this rotation is given by the curvature. However, there are two other possible um, geometric um, properties of spacetime. One of these is the torsion, uh, which is which, which can be interpreted uh, like the following. Uh, so, if you get two vectors and you parallel transport one along each other, you will get some deficit, and this deficit is given by the torsion. Uh, finally, non-metricity. Uh, is can be interpreted as the following. If you get some some line and you get a vector and you transport this vector along this curve, you will get some shift in the you will get some change in the in the length of the vector. And this is due purely to non metricity. So these uh, cartoons should be interpreted uh, as the following. This is a space time only with curvature. This is a space time only with torsion and this space time is only with non metricity. So in, in these three setups, uh, all the other two quantities vanish. So uh, these, uh, these manifolds uh, give us three possible representations of the gravitational phenomena. Uh, Einstein's insight was to describe general relativity by the curvature of spacetime. So this is reflected in the Einstein-Hilbert action by the Ricci curvature. Uh, rich scalar. So there are two other different possibilities uh, to describe gravitational phenomena which are uh, mathematically and physically equivalent. Physically equivalent at the level of the, um, of the number of degrees of freedom uh, and uh, mathematically equivalent at the level of the action. So one of these possibilities is the teleparallel equivalent of general relativity, which I will refer as teleparallel gravity for short, and this theory, uh, you only get um, non-zero torsion of space-time and curvature and non-metricity vanish. And the action for this, uh, oh, sorry, the, the action for this uh, teleparallel gravity is given in terms of the uh, torsion scalar, or also called Weizenbach scalar. I will explain later. Um, so finally, the last option. Uh, is uh, the symmetric teleparallel equivalent of general relativity, or symmetric teleparallel for short. And in this theory, uh, only no metricity is different from zero. Mm, sorry, here this comma should not be there, okay? It should be Q alpha mu nu. So um, in symmetric teleparallel, uh, the action for this theory is given by the no metricity scalar. And it is also important to notice that these three scalars are related among each other by um, four divergences. And uh, the, the four divergences for, uh, for these two scalars, R and Q, is different than the four divergences for this and for this. So uh, what, we have, what these theories have in common is that uh, general relativity and teleparallel gravity um, share a, a metric spacetime and general relativity and symmetric teleparallel are in a torsion-free space-time. And finally, these two theories are in a curvatureless space-time. So uh, why these two theories are called 
teleparallel, have teleparallel in their name, is because uh, they are in a curvature of space time. And um, this means that uh, vectors are parallel transported along all the manifold. Mm -hmm. So, um, in principle, these three theories are equivalent uh, at all levels, but if you make nonlinear modifications of these Lagrangians, you will get different stuff. And that's the interesting thing. Uh, F of R gravity, is, uh, as it has been the, more studied, the most studied uh, modification to general relativity, but there is also two options, F of T gravity and F of Q. In particular, F of T gravity was proposed um, more than 10 years ago, and F of Q is very, very, a very recent theory, so it is a, a field of uh, research uh, which is very novel and appealing. So I will focus on modify teleparallelism or modifications of teleparallel gravity. And uh, I will briefly define our building blocks. We need a basis of vectors and co-vectors. Uh, and these are the components of the linear transformation, and they satisfy a completeness relation and an orthonormality condition. The orthonormality condition is given by the Minkowski metric, and uh, you can recover the metric uh, from the inverse components of the tetrad field. Finally, uh, we need some uh, connection that describes a curvatureless and metric compatible space time, and the most simple choice is the white cell connections which is just the spin connection equals to zero, and uh, the connection in components uh, is written like this. You just take the, it, it just depends on first order derivatives of the tetrad field. And, sorry, uh, there, are other, there are other possibilities for uh, choosing the spin connection, uh, which are usually called like uh, covariant uh, formulations of the parallel gravity, and this is also very important for F of T gravity. And uh, you can see in this review some uh, update on the literature in this topic. Uh, but uh, in principle, uh, it doesn't matter what spin connection you choose because the, the, the action does not give any dynamics to it. So it is like some just gauge freedom that you, you get. And finally, it is useful to define uh, the torsion tensor which is just the torsion of this connection, which is then the symmetrization of these two indices, and you obtain this expression. And uh, with this torsion, we can define the torsion scalar, which is just this, okay? Um, so, uh, the action for teleparallel gravity, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it goes uh, proportional to the torsion scalar, and this torsion scalar satisfy this identity, um, here it is important to notice that um, this Ricci scalar is calculated with the levi civita connection. Oh, sorry. If we calculate it with the white support connection, we will get zero. Yes, so this is uh, an identity which has different connections on it. So this is the torsion scalar that I defined before. This is the Ricci scalar, and this is some boundary term or four divergence. And an important fact in this theory is that this uh, four divergence is not local Lorentz invariant, but only global Lorentz invariant. Uh, so, um, uh, when it comes to the parallel gravity, this term is harmless because you will get it integrated out in the action. So, uh, this will mean that teleparallel and general relativity describe the same physics. Uh, however, it, this boundary term it will be very important for F of T because uh, it produces some loss of local Lorentz invariance. Um, so, uh, you, you could say that uh, F of T gravity action, which is just nonlinear modification of the torsion scalar, uh, entails the modification of a Lorentzian pseudo invariant system. Uh, it is pseudo invariant because it is only a global invariant and not local invariant. Uh, so, the equations of motion of F of T gravity will lose the local Lorentz invariance. However, notice that uh, since T is um, is proportional to first orders to first order derivatives of the tetrad field, um, f of the f of t gravity equations of motions will be always of second order. This is very important, and um, because not uh, most of uh, modifications to general relativity will always uh, give give you a four order equations of motion. So, in principle, this is a very simple modification of general relativity in the parallel formalism 
and you get uh, some nice theory which has uh, uh, motivations uh, both in the high energy and low energy regime. In particular, the first time that uh, F of T gravity was studied was to provide an inflation without an inflaton field and smoothing black hole singularities, but later it was uh, very useful for describing accelerated expansion of the universe. Um, and uh, due to this loss of local Lorentz invariance, it is expected that the theory has extra degrees of freedom. So um, the issue about the degrees of freedom is, uh, has been very controversial uh, in the literature, but now we believe we have some growing evidence that it speaks in favor of only one extra degree of freedom, the same as in F of R gravity. In particular, here we did some, I mean, some robust Hamiltonian analysis. And you will think that this extra degree of freedom could be interpreted in the same way as, F of, as in F of R gravity. Um, this means to go from going from the Jordan frame of F of R gravity, you go to the Einstein frame and you get uh, some nice interpretation of the extra degree of freedom. However, in F of T gravity, this is not the same. Uh, you define the Jordan frame of the theory and you go to the Einstein frame and you get that uh, there is some, uh, you recover the, the frame, the conformally transformed teleparallel gravity. You obtain some scalar field here, which has the uh, incorrect uh, kinetic sign. And also you get this extra term, uh, which is Lorentz violating and uh, it obviously cannot remove by conformal transformations. So uh, this is why people say that in F of T gravity, it doesn't exist the, the Einstein frame because you get this extra coupling. Um, so um, it is sad, but um, sorry. We could think that maybe these formal transformations can help us to remove this term and get some proper Einstein frame. Um, so finally, just uh, for curiosity, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, tests of F of T gravity and it seems to be very compatible with solar system tests and uh, gravitational waves observation, galactic rotation curves, and in the issue of cosmological perturbations, um, we don't observe the extra degree of freedom uh, at the level of cosmological perturbations. And this is some, uh, there are some concerns in the literature uh, because people claim that uh, the theory could have some strong coupling problem, uh, but this is obviously work in progress, and uh, it remains to be understood. Uh, it remains to be understood uh, how to uh, do proper cosmological perturbations when they have the issue of the choice of the spin connection and uh, pertur perturbing correctly uh, at that field. Um, so finally, these formal transformations. Uh, we can propose the most general disformal transformation in the tetrad field in the following way. Uh, this phi is some scalar field uh, that describes the uh, the shift in the uh, in the in the notion of uh, a conformal transformed metric, and this c and d are just scalar functions uh, which are Lorentz. Uh, they are not uh, they are Lorentz invariant. And they depend on this scalar field and their and its derivatives. Um, so um, yes, okay. So this is the most general deformal transformation, and we are going to compute um, uh, some uh, modification, uh, some disformal uh, transformed action for f of t gravity, and see if we can remove this uh, this. Uh, extra term in the Einstein frame and see if we can get some proper Einstein frame. So um, we this formally transform the torsion tensor, uh, obviously some long expression. And uh, since we have this, um, sorry. Since this term has a T mu, this T mu is just the contraction of the, of the torsion tensor. Uh, we are interested in calculating this expression, okay? So, um, the transformation rule for this uh, for this uh, vectorial part of the torsion tensor is the following. It is not very long. That is uh, surprising. Um, so finally, um, this term. Please here notice that this phi mu is d mu phi. So we will get this is some shorthand notation, but this d mu phi contracted with this t mu 
gives um, an incredibly simple result, and this result can be expressed as um, the disformal transformation of this term is just some rescaling of the same term plus Lorentz invariant terms. So in principle, what we get is that we cannot remove uh, this Lorentz breaking term through these formal transformations. However, uh, there is some particular combination of the torsion, vectorial part of the torsion, and some Lorentz uh, preserving terms, which allows some uh, Einstein frame. Um, I mean, this combination of the torsion of the torsion of the vectorial part of the torsion allows some Einstein frame. And however, uh, one cannot understand very well what's happening here because this term is uh, usually Lorentz breaking and oh, this is a combination of terms that are Lorentz preserving. Uh, so the meaning of this expression is unclear. Uh, so we think that more work needs to be done. And in particular, this expression is obtained when C and D is, are equal to one. So when C and D are equal to one, we only get one uh, scalar field uh, which describes the, the shift in the, um, the distortion, the shift in the distortion of the, of the metric, and um, it describes only one degree of freedom. So in principle, our idea was if we perform some disformal transformation that only reproduces one uh, degree of freedom, uh, we, could, we will be able to have some physical interpretation for it in terms of the formal transformations. But uh, we see that the only way of obtaining that is, this, uh, is um, having the, the, the torsion scalars, sorry, the, the torsion tensor satisfying this expression. And finally, our conclusion is that uh, we are unable to remove the Lorentz violating term appearing in the Jordan frame. Uh, but we can, we can also see that d equals zero recovers a conformal transformation here. Okay. Um, so that's it. Since we are short of time, I go to the conclusions. And uh, we have seen that the concept of geometric trinity of gravity is some novel setup for building modifications to general relativity. This is very new and very exciting. Um, F of t gravity, uh, there is growing evidence that show that. Uh, shows one only one additional degree of freedom, um, but it cannot cleanly, ca cannot be cleanly interpreted as some scalar field through conformal transformations. And finally, in F of T gravity, it's not possible to find this Einstein frame through these formal transformations. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I think we have time for questions. Please, if you have questions, please uh, to ask them. Yes, I there is one question from Michal. Yes, please. So I have a question about the Planck scale in, in F of T theory. So I wonder, let's say that you define the Planck scale as an energy scale in which gravity overwhelms particle physics. So you scatter particles and you create black hole instead of the product of the scattering. And I wonder if you, if one does the math, like you consider some scalar theory, I don't know, lambda phi to the fourth of some particles that scatter, and you keep increasing energy scale, and at a certain point you create black hole. Then I wonder if the F of T Planck scale defined this way would be somehow radically different than the, than the GR Planck scale. Yes, I think um, in principle all this issue with the local Lorentz invariance means that at the high energies we will have violation, explicit violation yeah. of, of local Lorentz invariance. Um, yes, I, I think I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know uh, how the theory would look at the Planck scale. No, no, no I, I'm asking what is the Planck scale for this theory, kind of? Like uh, what is the energy scale on which the particle physics started to be starts to be ruled by gravity really ah well i think it obviously needs to be like a uh, very high energies uh, because we need to to get all the uh, consistency tests for uh, uh, that the theory is equal, equivalent to general relativity in the in the correct limits um so um yes i think it will be like uh, very high energies but maybe one uh, 
clue to your question maybe is that uh, in principle uh, f of t gravity uh, the degrees of freedom are the same than general relativity except for this extra degree of freedom so mm -hmm. there is some evidence that um, this extra degree of freedom the, the scale the energy scale of the extra degree of freedom uh, is in this work uh, they have calculated uh, perturbations to minkowski background and they have found some evidence for extra degree of freedom in some very uh, high energy scale uh -huh. uh, uh, so i think we are just starting to understand this this issue uh, okay 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 thank um, you hmm. There is another question from Alejandro. Yes. 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 Uh, so, if you have Lorentz violations at uh, at uh, at high energies, how do you avoid uh, them to you know percolating to low energies via uh, via uh, radiative corrections? You know the mechanism I evoked in in my talk. I don't know if you were there. Yes, I, I was there. I was there. Um, uh, for this kind of theories, the local Lorentz invariance is some. Uh, it, it occurs in. It's not uh, usual as some other theories. Uh, the Lorentz violation is in the in the tetrad field. Um, so in principle, the only way of uh, determining this uh, Lorentz invariance is uh, through uh, physical quantities that couple to the orientation of the tetrad field. But in particular, the metric like, like fermions. Is, like yes, fermions. like fermions. Yes, and this issue is not very well understood because fermions couple to the spin connect to the spin connection, and the spin connection in this theory uh, is some just some gauge degree of freedom. Uh, you can choose it like in in any way, and it's not given by the equations of motion. So the coupling with fermions in this theory is something that is not very well understood. Um, Okay. Okay. So, but it w I think it would be nice to to explore whether there is some, you know, um, some explicit mechanism that actually avoids this uh, this, uh, you know, uh, fine tuning problem of Lorentz invariance. Yes. Yes. I think it would be nice. Okay. Are there more questions? Well, you know, then thank you very much. Thank you.